We close our study of Joseph today, warning us to stay separate and yet living in the world. We're called to live in the world, but we're not called uh, uh, the of the world. Now, Egypt throughout the Bible was a type of the world with bondage to sin. As Exodus showed, a world which may be friendly to God's people at one moment, but in a moment, uh, but in a twinkle of an eye, they contain change to enemies very quickly. As a type of Christ, Joseph was called to a land to reveal the power of God to be a savior to God's people as he served in a heathen land. Pharaoh saw the power of God working through him. Responding, he elevated Joseph to rule behind him, number two in the entire country. Salvation was provided for Israel as Joseph provided the food they needed to make them the great nation. Just as Jesus provided bread of life for his people, even as we live in the United States today. Throughout his call, Joseph showed the importance of focusing on God's eternal plan instead of temporal conditions. You know, we live in a world today. We're always concerned about the bills. We're always concerned about everything. But Joseph showed the power of keeping focus on the eternity rather than on day-to-day -day operations. As such, we shall see God used him to provide a way uh, for Israel to grow great in Egypt and yet stay separate from world of Egypt. Stay a God godly people in a heathen land. Which is what we're going to do today as a church uh, from now on, I think. We are, we are called a post-Christian society today. Christianity is mocked. Christianity is attacked. Christianity is hidden. So we don't offend people. What do we do as a, na as a uh, nation today, a nation of godly people, following our God in this heathen land? As we look at today's verses, we understand Joseph had found favor in Pharaoh's eyes. Pharaoh was made great and rich through God's power working through Joseph. He likely would have given Joseph's family elevated positions all through the kingdom, but Joseph's family lacked the godly preparation that Joseph had. He was prepared greatly for a great call. The rest of the family was not. They would have fallen to the, uh, Egypt's dainties, sinful dainties, of the uh, flesh for a season, the pleasures of flesh for a season. So he needed to make sure that they remained separate from Egypt, even as they lived in Egypt, to become that great nation. Let's uh, look at uh, working through uh, Joseph. God worked with Joseph to make Israel grow great in the world, even as they had to remain separate from that world. Uh, please stand in honor of the Bible, and we're going to read from Genesis 46, 31 through 47, 6. So starting in 46, 31. And Joseph said unto his brethren, and unto his father's house, I will go up and show Pharaoh, and say unto him, My brethren, and my father's house, which were in the land of Canaan, are come unto me. And the men are shepherds, for the trade hath been to feed cattle. And they have brought their flocks, and their herds, and all they have. And it shall come to pass, when Pharaoh shall call you, and say, What is your occupation? That ye shall say, Thy servant's trade hath been about cattle from our youth, even until now. Both we, and also our fathers, that ye may dwell in the land of Goshen, for every shepherd is an abomination unto the Egyptians. Then Joseph came and told Pharaoh, and said, My father and my brethren and their flocks and their herds and all that they have are come out of the land of Canaan, and behold, they are in the land of Goshen. And he took some of his brethren, even five men, and presented them unto Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said unto his brethren, What is your occupation? And they said unto Pharaoh, Thy servants are shepherds, both we and also our fathers. They said moreover unto Pharaoh, For a sojourn in the land are we come, for thy servants have no pasture for their flocks. For the famine is sore in the land of Canaan. Now therefore we pray thee, let thy servants dwell in the land of Goshen. And Pharaoh spoke unto Joseph, saying, Thy father and thy brethren are come unto thee. The land of Egypt is before thee. In the best of the land, make thy father and thy brethren to dwell. In the land of Goshen, let them dwell. And if thou knowest any man of activity among them, then make them rulers over my cattle. And Joseph brought in Jacob his father, and set him before Pharaoh. And Jacob blessed Pharaoh. Therefore, Father, we need to be a blessing in this world. We need to be a blessing showing the power of God working through us. We have no value at all, Lord, but you working through us can do accomplish anything. And Lord, we need to stay focused on you. We need to proclaim your greatness. We need to proclaim that we follow you and not the world. 
We need to look forward to your blessings of joy over the world's carnal blessings of, uh, of uh, happiness for a season. Because, Lord, we know that everything you provide is eternal, and everything the world provides would be burned up in, for the sinful things that they are. And, Lord, as we look at how to be separate, let us look at Joseph's example and learn how to be separate in the United States, even as we are living in the United States. And, Lord, I pray that as God's people, you will bless us, as God's people, you will use us, as God's people, we will stay to your word that you can be blessed through our actions as we allow you to work through us, yield fully to your spirit. We ask in your precious sons your name. <coughs> Amen. Thank you for your seats. Now, we don't know exactly why shepherds were an abomination in Israel. It says they were. Why? We don't know. Perhaps it is because high society Egyptians looked at these shepherds as dirty people in the field and didn't want to associate with them. Much like when the shepherds came to Jesus' birth, the townspeople didn't think much of these dirty people coming into their town. Maybe uh, it was because their enemies were a shepherd, a shepherd, nomadic shepherd type people, and they associated uh, being shepherds with enemies. Uh, also, Jews were an abomination to Egyptians. We know that because they wouldn't eat with uh, Joseph's family when Joseph brought them in. Perhaps there was a double abomination because they looked at the Jews and they were shepherds. And so they had one nothing to do with it. We don't know. But the truth be known, it really doesn't make any difference. Jews were an abomination to high society Egyptians. Shepherds were an abomination to high society Egyptians. And God used these characteristics to ensure they remained separate uh, from high society Egyptians. That they could be a separated people under God while living in Egypt. They were in Egypt, but they were not Egypt. They were Goshen. They were living as God's people in a heathen land. Again, much like we do today. Pharaoh likely would have made them part of society in order to honor Joseph. Pharaoh loved Joseph. Pharaoh saw the power of God working through Joseph. He wanted to honor Joseph any way he possibly could. But had, he, had Joseph allowed that to happen, uh, they would have lost their identity as God's people. They would have been drawn into Egyptian society. They would have taken on Egyptians' uh, mores and their uh, ideas and their culture, their cultural habits, and they would have lost their full identity as God's people. They were holy, set aside for God's service from Egypt, even as they lived in Egypt. Uh, even as it was, Pharaoh did praise Joseph's family. He saw that uh, they were true men, but he still sent them off to Goshen with their desire. Now, we see many parallels uh, of Egypt and Israel today in the United States of America. Bible-believing Christians are an abomination in this world. Yet by our work, the world is served by seeing it's up to Christ and Christ's love. By our service, to, by God's leading, we may be accepted in this world uh, for God's glory. In the world, but again, but not of the world. Citizens of heaven, but righteous ambassadors of God in a land full of modern-day pharaohs. Willing to serve the world to show God's glory to the heathen, which do consider us abominations. As with Joseph, giving all glory to God as you yield him, allow him to work through you. Realizing that every bit of your wealth, strength, very life is dependent not on Pharaoh, but on God who made the things happen for his glory to place you where you need to be. God gave Joseph wisdom to establish Israel as a holy nation, set aside for God as we should see we see him teaching them, first of all, to be separate, teaching them then to be a witness, and then finally teaching them to serve. So teach them to be separate. 1 Corinthians 15.33 says, Evil communication corrupt good manners. God knows our weaknesses. We're social people. We like to be with people. We like to please other people. We don't like to offend other people. We're meant to fellowship with each other and with God. That's how God made us. Well, with those habits and those ideas, we will tend to fellowship with people who might be friendly to us. Now, once again, you play with dogs, you get fleas. That's pretty much what uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 33 says. The world is full of dogs with lots of fleas. In our fallen nature, we will tend to run with packs. We're a pack animal, basically. We'll tend to run with them in this society. We'll tend to take on their habits, their ideas, and we'll tend to fall away from uh, uh, Goshen and tend to follow Egypt's ideas. You had doubt me? Look at churches today. The churches are trying to be relevant to society, not trying to be separate and Goshen away from the world. 
God was building a world separated unto himself. He used Joseph uh, as a, a way to establish a place to build his people as they learned to live separate in heathen lands. This would come very valuable to them later. They were in a heathen land. They didn't know get, uh, Israel's God. Jews were an abomination to them. And yet they were living in this land, separated while still serving God, but still in Egypt. This is what the church needs to do today. We're separated people. We're declared holy. We're declared a people of God in a world that hates God. Well, we need to learn how to do that. And we need to do so in such a way that will draw people to God, not constantly fight people about God. Again, Pharaoh loved Joseph. He may very well have honored, uh, honored Joseph by elevating people in a very high society as rulers. Pharaoh saw what Joseph could do, but he would have drawn him once again in the Egyptian society, and he would have focused on carnal blessings. He would have focused on the fact that God has blessed me so much. Look at all the money I'm making. All these people bother me. This is so wonderful. Joseph already went through that difficulty to break down his pride. His family had not yet. God knows that people tend to follow Satan's idols of the flesh. Seeing blessings in this carnal world with the spirit out of sight and importantly out of mind. How many of you are guilty of that every now and then? He is preparing them to be separate. As he would warn them later. Exodus 34, 12 says this. Take heed to thyself, lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land whither thou goest, lest it be for a snare in the midst of thee, being an abomination as Jewish shepherds kept them separate as a people of God. They proclaim their position. I am a Jew. I follow the Jews' God. I am a shepherd. Am I an abomination in Egypt? I don't care. That is what I am. How many of you are willing to do that? Go to some place and say, I am a Bible-believing Christian. Do I think that uh, this is a sinful world? Yes, I do. Do I think that uh, we're following uh, the wrong ways? Yes, I do. Do I think homosexuality is a sin? Well, you're asking the wrong question because we're all sinners, but yes, I think homosexuality is a sin. These are things that set us apart from being part of polite society nowadays. We're not going to be accepted in polite society. But neither, uh, neither was Israel, and yet Israel ended up living in Goshen as a separate society, serving Egypt, that they may draw some who would be saved. So Joseph showed the importance of staying with God's people as he ensured his bones would not be buried. Remember, his bones are not in Egypt. When they left, for the, uh, when they were getting ready to go, he knew that they eventually leave. He knew that God's plan in 400 years was to put them through things and have the exodus. God revealed that to him. And he says, when you leave this place, you take my bones with you, that they may be buried in the promised land. He was number two in Egypt. He was number two as ruler. People came to him, bowed him, gave all kinds of praise, honor, and glory for who he was as a carnal leader. But he wasn't an Egyptian. He stayed separate as a Jew, serving under Pharaoh. But he was still a people of God. And that's what we need to do. Now, every one of you have jobs here. Every one of you are working hard. Every one of you are doing things to serve society. But you still need to be separate from that society as a people of God. So he was in the world in Egypt, but he was in God's world. So, he saw that we need to be separate. No, there's no question about it. If we, don't, if we uh, decide to go into the world and live the world's rules, we'll take on the world's habits. We'll take on the world's worship. We will leave our God and follow whatever society thinks is relevant at the time because we want to be leaders. So we need to be uh, separate, but we also need to be a witness. Uh, turn over to Matthew chapter 10, verses 32 to 33. So Matthew chapter 10. Verse 32 to 33. Very scary verses if you really get the important one. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. Praise God for that. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. Things you really need to look at. When you start and when people start asking you, do you really believe that silliness in the Bible? Well, yes, I do. I fully do. Well, you can't have a job here then. Well, I have an eternity in heaven. I don't need a job here. Joseph was a Hebrew who honored the Hebrews' God. As such, once again, he was an abomination to the uh, Egyptians. And yet he was number two. Yet he was a ruler. He lived Egypt's customs everywhere except for worship. He married an Egyptian woman. 
He looked like an Egyptian by dress and style. That's why they didn't recognize him at first. They thought he was an Egyptian. His wisdom given by God caused Egypt to prosper. And he gave all praise, honor, and glory to God. He accepted none for himself. His God was an abomination of Egypt, but they were made rich by him. Therefore, they were willing to allow him <coughs> into their society. His family looked like Hebrew shepherds. A double abomination. Well, maybe they should hide it. It worked for Joseph. What about his people? How easy would it have been for Joseph to coach him? He says, no, don't claim your Jewish background. You know, talk about you're from, uh, you're from the promised land over there, uh, you came from her, things like that. Don't claim that. Don't, don't claim your Jewish background. And shepherds are hated. You know, we need to get rid of those sheep. You know, if you come in and say that you're a carpenter or something like that, you'll be accepted. He didn't do that. He told them to proudly proclaim who they are. I am a Jew, I follow the Jewish God, and I am a shepherd. Jacob, had Jacob denied God's call, uh, God would have denied Jacob. The he comes and says, no, I'm not a Jew. No, I'm not, I come from over there, but I'm not really a Jew. I know there's an abomination. Don't worry about it. I won't bring any of that silliness into your country. I want to be accepted in Egypt. God would have denied him at that point. Joseph could not let that happen. Following God, Joseph told him to tell the truth, even as it would cement their lives as abominations in this world. You come as God-fearing shepherds, proclaim yourself as God-fearing shepherds. Good advice for us. If you're a God-fearing, Bible-believing, fundamentalist Christian, you go to university or something like that, you go to school, proclaim yourself as a God-fearing, Bible-believing, fundamentalist Christian. Will you be mocked? Yes. Be laughed at? Yes. You may lose jobs. You may be denied going to colleges. Well, it says that uh, if you follow Jesus Christ, you will suffer uh, persecution, does it not? That's just proof that you're doing the right thing. And God will give you a better, uh, better resurrection for it. No. Pharaoh brought them in and heard the testimonies. We saw that uh, impressed, he even allowed Jacob to bless him. Imagine, double abomination. Blessing the Pharaoh of Egypt. Pharaoh sent them off to live in Goshen. Egypt saw people they viewed as abominations, but they saw true people living for their God, which is exactly what they saw in Joseph and why they elevated Joseph. You want to be successful in this world? If God wants you to be successful, you will be. If God wants to place you in a place where he can show his power to a society, you will be elevated. If he doesn't want you there, you won't be. Proclaim him, you'll follow his will, his word, remain separate, and he will use you for his glory where he puts you. So how much better would it be if we followed Joseph's advice today? Once again, I'm a Christian, I serve Christ, and I will give God all the glory. I want none for myself. What happens to many Christian charities today? They have dropped the word Christian. Why have they dropped the word Christian? Well, there's so many people offended by it. They think we're trying to convert them. They think we're trying to do things. Boy, that'd be a horrible thing, wouldn't it? Converting people to Christ. But we think we're trying to convert them. We think we're trying to proselyte them. We're trying, they think we're trying to tell them they're lesser than we are. That's not what we want to do. We want to do our good works. Well, they've denied Christ, have they not? They've dropped the word Christian, who they were claiming to serve. They've dropped that word. Is Christ going to accept their good works as something that will be uh, elevated in heaven? What did it say? You deny my name uh, before men. What is he going to do? He's going to deny you before his heavenly Father. Don't do it. But that is what the world is doing. That's what would have happened in Egypt had they not learned to be separate people. Fundamentalist Christians are abominations in this world. Make no mistake. Laughed at, mocked, all the above. So many Christians have left uh, the Goshen of this world to be acceptable and comfortable in the modern day Egypt. The Zarian Egypt's dainties over, uh, over uh, Goshen's joys. Look at our churches. We, uh, we see churches open and, open and affirming with the, with the rainbow flags. We see nightclub atmospheres, easy believism with no repentance needed, health and wealth gospel, etc. All kinds of things that deny the Word of God, that go directly against the Word of God. Why? They're filling up their pews. They're seeing people come. They're seeing people all over the place serving God. But the God they're serving is not the God of the Bible. But the God they're serving is one made up from Egypt's, uh, Egypt's uh, idols being combined into the church. Let us be true men, proclaiming what we are to a lost and dying world. Not trying to pin it with Egypt, but calling that lost world a Goshen. Going to and living in Goshen separated the people in modern-day Egypt. Now, this church, how many people in this church? 
Yeah, there are 40. How many people are out there? We're separated people, are we not? We're completely different from what the world expects, what the world wants. And doing that, we need to stay that way. Okay, some people get offended and leave. Okay, we'll be 30 people affirming God. We'll be 20 people affirming God. The, the important thing is we need to be that separate people, the remnant affirming God. Be a witness that Egypt may see God's power working through you as they did with Joseph, and they come to seek God. So, we know we need to be separate. We know we need to be a witness. We also need to serve. Jesus Christ came to serve sinners, did he not? Jesus Christ came to serve enemies, did he not? Jesus Christ came and talked to people that the modern day religious people of the time denied that would possibly ever get to heaven. We need to do the same thing. We need to serve. The Hebrews' uh, uh, shepherd abominations were accepted by Pharaoh to live near Egyptians, even as they were separated in Goshen. But they weren't exiles. They weren't sent off to, uh, as exiles. They were accepted in the land because of Joseph's testimony. And he told Joseph that he were able, they can rule us over their cattle. You know, you might call them Egyptian hypocrites. No, well, you hate shepherds, but you sure like the wool. You hate shepherds, but you love the meat. You hate shepherds, but you want the leather. You hate shepherds, but you want all the benefits. But at the same time, we may hate Hebrews, but you know what? They serve us by being those shepherds. We can't stand them. But you know what? They're in Goshen. Well, heck, yeah. we'll let them be in Goshen. We'll let them raise that cattle. And we'll take the benefits. Isn't that a wonderful thing? Well, how do you want to serve the world? Do what God has called you to do. Give those benefits to the world as you give praise, honor, and glory to God, and the world will notice. They may not come to God, but they'll notice. Um, and they may say we may despise their God, but you know what? I look at what happened there. I look at all the things that they're doing. I look at the blessings they got. My idols have done nothing for me. Maybe there's something about this guy. Maybe they're actually coming and see what this guy is. Not many in Egypt did, but we do know that a mixed multitude did leave with the Exodus when they left uh, Egypt. So some did follow. They had big eight problems later, but that's a different story for a different sermon. So, you draw people to God by showing God's loving character of service, not by showing Satan's hatred to get even. They're very good at that. If we do the same thing, that's just one more, one more idol worshiper trying to prove his way. It won't work. It won't draw anybody. All through the Bible, we are called to serve one another. Christ himself took on service clothing and washed the apostles' feet. I understand Peter when he said, what are you doing, Lord? I understand Peter fully. You know, here is the great God of heaven, Jesus Christ, leaving the throne on the right hand of the Father to come among men and putting on servant's gowns Kneeling in front of me and going to wash my feet? I should be kneeling to him and prostrate, scared to death of what he thinks of me because he knows my thoughts. And yet here he's washing my feet. I understand exactly what Peter was thinking, but Jesus Christ was showing us. We are servants. We come to serve sinners. We come to serve that they may be drawn to Jesus Christ. We're separated. We're witnesses. But we also serve because that is what draws people. Like I say, it shocked Peter. Guess what? It shocked the world too. That's the whole idea. And if he it was not beneath Christ to serve others, trust me, it's not beneath you. Egypt viewed Hebrew shepherds as abominations. It would be easy to return such hatred. But then how would they be drawn to that loving God? Even those in Egypt who considered the Jews enemies still need to be served uh, by Israel. Turn a couple of pages over what we just read to uh, Matthew chapter 5, verses 33 to 38. And the Jews had taken the wrong idea, uh, and they had uh, put in their own rules with their uh, talents, things like that. But we look at what Jesus said about how to treat enemies. So in Matthew chapter 5, starting verse 33. Again, he had heard uh, that it had been said by them of old time, Thou shalt not forswear thyself, thou shalt perform unto the Lord thy oaths. But I say unto you, uh, excuse me, I'm, I'm reading 33, I'm done with 43. Good verses, but the wrong one. The wrong ones. <laughs> Verse forty-three. You have heard the, that it has been said, "Thou shalt love thy neighbor, but and hate thy enemy." But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you, that ye may be the, the children of your Father which is in heaven. 
For he maketh his sun to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. For if ye love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans the same? And if ye salute your brethren, only what do uh, ye more than others? Do not even the publicans so? Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. The Jews misunderstood God's love and viewed the harsh penalties for sin as reason to hate heathen sinners. Huh? Trust me. All through the Old Testament, we see the penalty for idolatry. We see the penalty uh, for the things of going against God's word. We see the penalty of violating God's law. Yes, there are harsh penalties. There's no question about it. And the Jews took that as reason to hate their enemies. But that is not what God meant. Listen to uh, Exodus uh, verse 23, uh, chapter 23, verse 4 to 5. That came from that very harsh law. If thou meet thine enemy's ox, or his ass going astray, thou shalt surely bring it back to him again. If thou see the ass of him that uh, hateth thee lying under his burden, and wouldest forbear to help him, thou shalt surely help with it. This is not only do, uh, do no harm to your enemy, this is going out of your way to help your enemy. That's in the Old Testament. That's what all those harsh laws that they were talking about. And you're still supposed to help your enemy. That is what God wants, that's what draws people to him. So those in Egypt needed to be helped with their livestock. Don't hate them being hypocrites. Help with their livestock. If you see people you despise needing help, show the love of Christ. That they may see the love of Christ, be drawn to the love of Christ, come to his cross, see how they sinned against that very Christ, and let Christ convert their hearts. They may still despise you, but if you suffer for righteousness' sake, guess what? We saw that it was acceptable to God. Romans 12, 20, 21 adds this. Therefore, if an enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in doing so, thou shalt keep coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Such service may save a soul from hell. Let all serve with Israel, that men may be drawn out of Egypt to join Goshen. So looking at all this, we see that God led uh, Joseph to show us all how to be successful as a separated people of God. Proclaim exactly who you are and remain separate from the world. Don't try to mirror the world to fit in. The church is doing that today. And we see the results of this country. It used to be the most blessed country on earth. It's a disaster now. We are under God's judgment because we have left the God uh, of our fathers and we have served the God of mankind today to try to fit in with the world. Now, look at what in the past. Desiring the world of the king, uh, the fitting with neighbors, led to Saul. That didn't work out so well. Desiring the fitting with the world, led to Israel, uh, Israel's idolatry later, leading to God's judgment. Israel with us today, desire comfort and popularity over worship and service with God in our future can be seen with the, what uh, God did with his people in Israel. Israel informed Pharaoh they were abominable shepherds. They denied it. But Joseph had been accepted as he served while proclaiming that under God. Now, Joseph didn't attack society as much as he served society with God's love to proclaim God to that society, that that society may see the love of God, and they accepted Joseph. You want to be accepted in this world? If God wants to send revival, you do it exactly that way. You proclaim exactly who you are, what you are, Give all praise, honor, and glory to God as you serve those who hate God. And then, if God so desires, he will send that revival, and we may see uh, great things again. We are blessed in this nation as we proclaim God as our God. We must now realize we are the abominations in society. We can only change hearts once again by proclaiming who we are, what we are. Very strong, very loud, and I say proud, but proud in the fact that we have a God, not pride in ourselves. Not attack society once again as much as proclaiming Christ as true citizens, willing to serve society, but not willing to compromise our religious principles, not willing to, uh, to uh, compromise our belief in God, not willing to bend to what society wants in order to be fit in with society. Israel eventually lost its all of God in Egypt. More comfortable in Egypt's bondage of sin than facing God's hardship en route to the promised land and they wanted to return. They were constantly saying, let's go back to those leeks and cucumbers they had in Egypt. They forgot what else was involved there. They had the promise I'm saying in front of them. 
They refused to cross that Jordan River because they trusted Egypt more than trusted God. The church today has lost its awe of God. Desiring to turn to the world's comfortable sin to fit in, rather than being abominations in this world, drawing people out of Egypt into Goshen. Being true men, we used to lead society in righteousness. Talked about this morning, homosexuality was listed before as a mental illness, not too long ago. <coughs> Sex before marriage was considered shameful. We may be attributed too harshly, but it was so shameful that if uh, some girl got pregnant in high school, they were shipped off. Churches stressed holiness in worship and in practice. Now, we mock fundamental, fundamental Christianity society. Hello, you abominations. We now want you in our churches. Many churches today call abortion a gift of God. Can you imagine that? I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. God knew me before my mother knew me. God knew and made me in the nether parts of the world. And yet, uh, our churches today are calling abortions a blessing from God. Mainline churches celebrate all forms of sexual perversions. Church services today can't be dis uh, distinguished from nightclubs. We've lost the holiness. We've lost the awe of our God, and we're facing the consequences. Well, uh, no, we're abominations in this world, but do you want to draw people back? Don't fall for that. Proclaim his truth from his word. It's his word that will change hearts. Not uh, accepting people, not, our, not, not my great speech, I'm proving today how good a speaker I am today, right? <laughs> that will not bring people back. It's the word of God proclaimed strongly, yielded fully, is what will bring people back. As we move forward, let's proclaim who we are, who we serve, and stand for as true men. Professing his truth as we're willing to separate society, uh, excuse me, serve society while being separate from society. Living in Egypt as a separate people in Goshen. Now living in the United States of America as a people of heaven. Separated, but still in the country. Showing Christ's character in a lost and dying world that people will be shamed as they attack you. Now, there's no reason to attack us at all if we've lived right. They will, but then they're shamed. It calls a fire to be uh, put on their head. You just, I just attacked you, and here you are bringing me uh, some furniture because I just lost them in a fire. What gives? They don't understand that. That's what Coles of Fire is talking about. And so we'll, draw, we'll draw people to God as they see the love of God. That doesn't make sense in this world. Israel was expelled from Egypt, uh, and they did not make the promised land, as they had taken the faith of Egypt over their own faith in God. We are falling into that same trap today. Our remnant did remain. Joshua and Caleb remained true men. And through Joshua and Caleb, they were sent out 40 years in the desert, and they did eventually cross the Jordan River. They did eventually take the promised land. They did eventually do the things and that's what we need to be in this society. We need to be Joshua and Caleb, as the rest of Israel did not want to cross out of fear. They didn't trust their God. Joshua and Caleb did. You want to, uh, you want to go into the promised land? Be Joshua and Caleb, as everyone else is fearful. The church is facing the desert today and about to meet the latest Jordan River as Christ returns. Let us not worry about the, let us not worry about the world. We see the river. We know how to cross it. We know God will lead us. Let us proclaim Christ and be allowed in his presence, suffering in this world while molded into the likeness of Christ. Exactly what Joseph did. He was a type of Christ. He was a type of Christ that served Egypt. We need to be a type of Christ. I'm not comparing myself to Joseph. But we're called to have the mind of Christ and be examples. We're to be a type of Christ in this modern day Egypt that we may show God's love and see people have the power and they may accept God because of it. And with that, Let's turn over and uh, say what we need to do in this world. If we're going to be separated from this world, we need to surrender all. So turn your hymnals to uh, page 49 as we sing, I surrender all. <coughs> Oops. Please do stand and join me in singing hymn number 489, I surrender all, <laughs> verses 1 and 4. Yeah. 
God wants of you. Said it right there. He wants all of you. Now, has everybody here accepted that fact? Have they surrendered all, all their life of wanting to live in this world, all their life of enjoying the pleasure of sin for a season, all of uh, the worldly benefits, and they surrender to Jesus Christ, realizing we've sinned against the Holy Father. We've sinned against the Holy God. He wants all of us <coughs> to serve him in spirit and truth. That's what these verses are. Be holy, for I am holy. He is holy in every aspect of his life. That's what salvation is. Recognizing our sinful condition, recognizing we can't be holy on our own, and we yield all of ourselves to him. It takes uh, eternity of growing, you know, growing closer to him. It will never be him, but the idea is, I don't want what I have now. I don't want to serve this world. I recognize that Goshen is where I need to be, and I want to serve him there. If you never come to his cross, to go and be separated from this world, be a separate people unto God, an abomination in this world, mocked, persecuted, but accepted in the beloved, made a son or daughter of the Most High God, that's how you do it. You surrender all. You allow that blood of Christ to cover the sins that have kept you separated from all. If you've done that, praise God for it. But now, here's a question. Egypt uh, and Israel were separated, but Israel started following the ideas of Egypt. And when they left, after suffering in the bondage of sin of Egypt, they want to return. Do you ever want to return? I occasionally do. I occasionally lose my focus. You need to pray that God will keep you separate, will keep your focus, will keep it so that you are yielding him fully. You need his strength, his power. You need to give him all praise, honor, and glory for everything that happens. As soon as you give it to yourself, you've lost his power. He is the one that needs the glory and the power. And if you do so, if you are separate, uh, proclaiming yourself as a fundamentalist Christian in this country that calls that an abomination. If you're then a witness to that Christ who has empowered you and given you joy, if you're willing to serve, that is what he wants. And you might be able to draw some people out of Egypt in the Goshen and be saved. And if you're not doing that, you need to ask God for the strength to start doing that. So as we go to prayer, first of all, thank God for the fact that uh, he saved you. If you're saved, if not, uh, come here and show you exactly how to be saved from his word. If you are saved, ask God to use you in a great and mighty way. Ask him to make sure that you're separate. Ask him to look at your heart to find out where you're still coming in and laying with dogs and get all those fleas off you. And allow yourself to serve him fully in spirit and truth. So as Kathy plays one more verse, pray to that, and then I'll close this. celebrated Thanksgiving last Thursday. The biggest thing we're thankful for is the fact that you did send your son to reveal God to man, to call man back to God, who we have left with our sin, and provided the blood shed that would cover our sins, that we may be called holy in front of a holy God. And Lord, we're thankful for that gift. We're thankful for the salvation you give so freely. The costliest gift of all time, Lord, but given to us freely. And Lord, we're thankful for those who have accepted that free gift. If there's anybody here who hasn't, let the day be the day they realize their sin in front of a holy God and allow them to be separate from this world. And Lord, as we look at that gift, we realize you want all of us. We realize you want us fully yielded. And if we're fully yielded, you give us your great joy. You give us your great power. You show us how to be separate in that world and to be used however you see fit. And Lord, we saw the example of how to do that with, Jacob, with uh, Joseph and with Jacob as they came in to be a separate people, apart from Egypt, and yet they, uh, the Egyptians saw them as true men, having a power that their great society did not have through God, having now Pharaoh praise them. And Lord, we don't want praise. We want your name to be praised. But Lord, uh, let people see us as true men. Let us see us as people proclaiming uh, the fact that we serve a living God. We serve a God of the Bible, 
And we believe every single word of it, even as the world mocks it. And Lord, by doing so, uh, allow your power to work through us for your purposes and for uh, your glory. And Lord, we give you uh, all praise and honor and glory for whatever answer you give us. And let us go through proclaiming ourselves as separate people and yet serving the society we live in as God's people. We ask in your precious sons to your name. Amen. Amen. Amen.